Okay, so now we need to do the lab calculations involving enthalpies of neutralization and enthalpies of combustion. And so let's define that first. <clears throat> and so the enthalpy of neutralization is it's the enthalpy change when an acid reacts with a base to produce one mole of water. And so this is important in the definition. We are going to make a mole of water. It's the molar enthalpy of neutralization to produce one mole of water. So an acid-base reaction, such as hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide, uh, it's a neutralization reaction. It's a double replacement. It's going to produce um, HOH, which is water. And in this case, it's going to produce NaCl. It's going to produce an, uh, water and a salt is what we're going to produce. And so per mole of water produced is what the enthalpy of neutralization is, how much heat change occurs or energy change occurs. So let's get into the calculations. Okay, so here's our problem. 50 milliliters of one molar HCl at 25 degrees Celsius reacts with 50 milliliters of one molar NaOH at 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the mixture increases to 28 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy of neutralization. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write down the equation here uh, between HCl and sodium hydroxide. So HCl plus NaOH is going to produce uh, water plus NaCl. Now this equation, I use this one because it's already balanced. Everything's going to be a 1. Coefficients are all 1's here, so it makes the problem easy. But they won't always be that way. And so uh, here is the um, idea behind this, is that you're going to have your container, uh, when you mix the two chemicals, the acid and the NaOH, into your container, uh, the chemicals that are in the water are going to release the energy to the water, and we can measure the energy released to the water. And so it's going to be a delta H equals MC delta T. But the important thing to realize in this problem that the MC delta T that we're measuring here is the water. Um, what is the mass of the water, the heat capacity of the water, and the change in temperature of the water, which the chemicals are in releasing the heat to. And so um, when you mix the 250 milliliters of solutions, you end up in here with 100 milliliters. Now we're going to make an assumption in this lab, and we're going to make the assumption that the uh, density of this water is one gram per milliliter, even though it's not pure water, it's got other stuff in it. And so that's going to be one assumption that you're going to be making in your calculations. And so if you have 100 milliliters and it's one gram per milliliter, making the assumption, then what you have is 100 grams of water. And so that is one assumption that you need to be aware of. We are assuming that the water is pure water and its density is one gram per milliliter, which it's not at 25 degrees Celsius. You can actually make this a little bit more accurate by looking up the density of water at 25 degrees Celsius. But you're still dealing with the fact that we have other stuff in there and it's not pure water. Heat capacity of water, you should know by now already, is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the delta T... Uh, we started these at 25 degrees, and they went up to 28 degrees, and so the 100 milliliters of water went from 28 to 25. That's a 3 degree temperature change. So when you calculate uh, these, when you multiply these together, you get 1, 2, 5, 4, and if you look at the units, uh, gram cancels gram, degrees Celsius cancels degrees Celsius, and you're left with joules. So it's that many joules. That is the delta H. That is not the delta H sub N. Okay? So you need to keep that in mind. This is not equal to the enthalpy of neutralization. Because the enthalpy of neutralization, if we go back to the previous page, the enthalpy of neutralization is the heat released per mole of water produced. So we need to divide this 1254 by the moles of water produced in this chemical reaction between the HCl and the NaOH. We need to know how many moles of water is produced. Now that gets us back into stoichiometry.
And so if I want to know how many uh, moles of water, I need to do my stoichiometry here. Now, I made this one an easy problem because I gave you 50 milliliters of each, and they're each one molar, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and so we have the perfect ratios here. There's no limiting reactant is what I'm saying there. And so how much water is produced is going to be dependent upon either the HCl or the NaOH, them being equal in this particular problem. And so I give you molarity information, and so molarity is equal to moles per liter. And so if we want to talk about the moles of HCl that we have, how many moles of HCl? Well, we have 50 milliliters, and so that would be 0 0.05 liters. And the molarity is 1.0 molar. And so the moles of HCl would be 1 times 0 0.05 or that would be uh, 0.05 moles of HCl. That's how much HCl is present. We also have 0.05 moles of NaOH because it's the same concentration and same uh, amount. And they react in a one-to-one -one ratio to make one water. So for every one HCl in our equation, we're going to produce one water. And so we're going to make 0.05 moles of water. And that number needs to go right there and divide it. And so you get 0 0.05 moles there. Now if we calculate that, you get 25080 joules per mole, and that is a unit of molar enthalpy of neutralization, joules per mole. Now, um, a lot of times you'll see these expressed in kilojoules instead of joules because the numbers are large, and so it's easier to express these in kilojoules, and so if you divide this by 1,000, you get 25.08 kilojoules per mole. And so you might see it like that instead. Now, I just completely made up these numbers. So this is not the molar enthalpy of neutralization for HCl and NaOH. It's, it's not even close. But you get the idea of how to solve the problem. Enthalpy of combustion is similar. And the enthalpy of combustion is the enthalpy change that occurs when one mole of a substance combusts. And so remember, we put the lighter underneath the can and we heat up the water and figure out the enthalpy change of the water, uh, and that's heat loss equals heat gain, which is the enthalpy change of the thing that's burning. So uh, let's work out an equation for this one. So what is the enthalpy of combustion for methane if 4 grams of methane causes 50 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius to rise to 35 degrees Celsius? And so the uh, enthalpy change is going to be mc delta T. And so again, the thing that is absorbing the heat, in this case, is the water. So we need the, this data is for the water. The mass of the water would be 50 grams. The heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, or joules per gram Kelvin. And the delta T of the water, in this case, is 10 degrees Celsius. So canceling out units and punching into your calculator, you get a delta H of 2,090 joules. Now, again, I want to point out to you once again, this delta H, this is not equal to delta H sub C, because the delta H of combustion, if you go back to your definition, it's per mole of substance burnt. And so we need to divide this number by moles of methane. How many moles of methane did we combust in our chemical reaction? And so again, we jump back into stoichiometry here, and we have four grams of methane, and we need to convert that to moles. And so one mole of methane has a molar mass of 16 grams. So 4 divided by 16 gives you 0.25 moles. And that number goes here. And that will give you 8,360 
joules. Now, since we divided by the moles, this becomes delta H of combustion. Um, once again, you can convert this to kilojoules. This is joules per mole now. Um, and you'll see that kilojoules often, again, I just made these numbers up. This is nowhere near the enthalpy of combustion of uh, methane. But again, it's the process that's important here. So just find the heat and divide by the moles that we burnt for combustion, the moles of the methane burnt. For neutralization, it's per mole of water produced. So make sure you understand the differences there and you don't confuse those two processes. So those are your calculations for the labs that we're going to be doing on how to um, do the actual uh, enthalpy calculation.